Hello, good afternoon. Uh, what happened this morning, we were recording, I think until I disconnected myself and came back again for some technical reasons. Then when we completed our class, I have found that I didn't record, I forgot to record, I mean, the second part of it. Uh, so I was thinking of the students who I mean, couldn't attend the session this morning, so that they may find difficulty. I, I mean, although the material is very easy, and it is covered in 343 and COVID-5, but they may find difficulty in understanding what have been covered. So I decided to make quick recording of uh, what is remaining, or let's say part two of uh, today's lecture. So I'll just make it quick and not in very detail. So hopefully you like it. And uh, so then, I'm and then basically we have a complete picture now of uh, what have been uh, covered this morning. Uh, I will move to, I mean, where we have stopped. Let me just shift the screens, okay. Uh, basically, I was speaking and I think we have reached, uh, I mean, the material we are discussing, this is COVID-5 uh, material from 343. So I'm basically co I'm covering the same material of the 444. Why I have uh, chosen this one? Because you have done it previously. You have attended an exam previously. You know the sequence of the slides, so it's much easier for you to follow. I mean, although material is the same, but there is a bit, uh, let's say, differences in, in the order and the content, some slides. So I've decided to use this one. So we, I mean, we have covered the uh, thing from here to this one, and then we skipped to slide, I believe, I have said to you, 20. So we have discussed this one, we have discussed this one. I think we have reached uh to this point so i'm um, the gold casket so because you have said to me that you couldn't see it clearly so within that i will just make it simple so we have gold cascade i mean mechanism or tool so we have stakeholders and drivers which, i mean which are driving why stakeholders want to invest and want to make businesses and how they want to make great values so usually we spoke about uh, i mean pistilli the tool we have covered in 343, P for political, uh, I mean, political activities, uh, sub, let's say the I mean, government is uh, supporting investors, foreign investors come and invest in the country. So we have many entities, whether it's ministries or economic development board. So investors will see this, uh, I mean, as a, I mean, a positive initiative, then they will come and invest in the country. We have economical situation of the country, the GDP, so this is helping investors to have security and uh, be, let's say, safe and be feel, let's say, confident uh, without worrying too much that the situation in the country is fine and safe so that they could come and invest. Social situation, the customers, the type of customers that uh, we have in the country and the willingness to, I mean, uh, let's say, be, be customer of the business the investors have in mind. We have as well the I mean, technological evolution, development, we have latest technologies, uh, 4G, 5G, from broadband. So these are all helping companies uh, I mean, to utilize technology in doing the business. We have as well the legal situation of the country, the supporting system, for example, the legal laws and regulations, whether these laws and regulations are helping investors, help, helping foreign investors come invest the country. There's a clear court system, there's an appeal system in place. So these are all helping for investors or we can consider them as drivers, which will influence the stakeholders' needs. Uh, for example, they have many questions, so, so that they, I mean, that should be answered. So these are influencing, I mean, the stakeholder needs. Uh, we said that uh, there is a value created here that they have to agree on, all stakeholders together. Uh, basically, I mean, they need to understand the, the benefits out of this business or out of this company, out of this organization with less risk and less number of resources. Then the stakeholders need will be, should be converted to enterprise goals or the strategic object, objective of the company. COVID defined it as 17 goals, uh, as enterprise goals, because it's frameworks that has 17 strategic or enterprise goals. 
then this will be I mean uh, converted or less IT related goals will be developed uh, which will should be mapped to the enterprise goals again COVID defined here 17 IT related goals then again we have then finally we got the enablers we have seven enablers so we should be mapped to the IT related goals uh, what I'm using here to just facilitate it to you to so that you understand it I mean more easily uh, that we have some appendixes and figures that uh, I mean uh, used in uh, I mean COVID-5 so I'll be displaying now in a moment in the book of COVID-5 so that we can follow um, the appendixes and uh, the figures here there's one more thing uh, for enterprise goal and IT related goals usually I speak about goals for so 17 goals and 17 goals how they are grouped they are grouped using the balance core card tool so there's balance core card tool see this one it has four dimensions or four perspectives so when you group your 17 I mean uh, enterprise goals or the IT related goals group them using these dimensions so the ones related to financial put them under financial dimension the ones related to customers put them under customer the same for Internal processes and procedures. Uh, mainly, it means here the uh, the initiative, the project, the task, the activities. So the day-to-day -day or the projects. So uh, place them here. And finally, for learning and growth. So for any company, we have skills. We have people working on it. So it's about their training, their development, the system and tools that are supporting them and completing their jobs. So I will just go quickly over these appendixes and figures so that you understand it clearly. Let me just open this. So this is the book of COVID-5. I mean COVID-5. Let me, uh, let me just open. First, I think it's appendix. Appendix D. So appendix D. So appendix D. Yeah, this is Appendix D. So just see the mapping. Just see the mapping between. So we have stakeholders needs. So this we are mapping stakeholder needs. We have around two pages stakeholder needs. So these are the questions they raise before they invest in this company or in this organization. And uh, and we have seventeen enterprise goals which are defined by COVID. So the what we are doing, we are mapping now. We are doing mapping exercise. This question, let's say, how do I manage performance of IT? This is mapped with uh, objective number two and five, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14. So this is for appendix. So we are doing it for this whole questions that stakeholders have in mind. Let's move to figure, figure, I think we have five. Figure five and six. Okay, this is figure five. So we have the 17 enterprise goals defined by COBET. Here we are grouping them using the balance core card dimensions, the four dimensions. Here we are mapping it with the, uh, the value creation, uh, I mean, elements, benefit, I mean, realization, risk optimization, and resource optimization. Was that, was that primary or secondary? I mean, we are doing the same now. We should do the same for the IT related goals. I mean, which is figure uh, six now. So again, the 17 IT related goals are grouped based on the balance core card approach. Uh, let's go to appendix. Appendix, uh, I think it's B. Appendix B. So this is Appendix B. So this is mapping between enterprise goal and IT related goals. So we have 17 for enterprise goals, which are the ones on X, X axis. And the Y axis, we are facing the IT related goals. So we are doing a map because the IT related goals should support completion of the enterprise goals. So the IT should be aligned, IT goals should be aligned with the business goals. IT is supporting the business. So this is the meaning of it. So let's see here, we have 17 goals and we are doing mapping again. 
uh, the, go uh, the goals are again grouped here based on balance code card the same as well here on the four dimension of balance code card we see the mapping is it primary or is it supportive or, or secondary let's see the final let's see <coughs> we are doing now the mapping between the IT related goals and the processors or the processors we said within COBIT or basically the enablers so within COBIT we have 17 IT related goals and we said we have 37 processors we have <coughs> we have uh, I mean governance and we have management we have 37 processes, 5 for governance, Loma Adelaine, and I evaluate direct and monitor domain. We have 5 processors. Uh, if, you, if you see it down, we, we are having all, I mean, APO here, I mean, domain number 2. We are having build, acquire, and implement, BAI, and we have deliver support and service, and monitor, evaluate, and address and assess so we have we are doing the mapping we want to see whether it is primary or secondary relationship between or the mapping is a primary or secondary between those processor processes and the it related goals i think this is uh and this is it for i mean the book uh, the book if if, if um, you need it we, we, we can we can chat later on over it if you need it but it, it, it is already covered in the slides so when you go back to the slides when you go back to the slide you will see it here as well so these are all i think this is figure five uh, this is uh, uh one more one more thing for balance core card when you read it read it from bottom up don't read it top down or here it's from right to left so uh, in any company there are people working they have systems uh, they are training plans uh, development plans which will help them in achieving completing successfully the projects the tasks the activities of the company which means the customers or the objective set for the customers will be achieved more customers happy customers which means the financial goals will be achieved for example more money so this is how to read it so i think this is uh, appendix d this is appendix d uh, this is appendix d this is figure Six. Uh, this is appendix uh, B, and this is uh, appendix C. So this is exactly, I mean, mapped or exactly the same content of the book I've just explained from. Because with the book you will have full information. Here it's only cut and paste, so some information might be missing. So I think with this we completed with principle one. Or principle two is covering enterprise end to end so what does it mean just focus on this one covering all functions and processes in any company speaking from it point of view speak about two things two things governance and management and management so there are processes we just spoke about uh, i mean the process uh, reference process model uh, This one we have 37 processes five for governance 32 for management four domains for management one two three four and one domain for uh, governance so so this is the meaning of it if you go more in detail so uh, governance this is one domain eval edm evaluate direct and monitor and for management we have four domains Plan, build, run, monitor, all APO, BAI, DSS, and MEA. Uh, these two are concerns with operations. You know, build and run. So let's go back and uh, see what's miss, what, what, what we didn't cover yet. So this covers all, within this principle, covers all processes and functions. I mean, to achieve governance and uh, management in any IT enterprise. So this integrates governance of enterprise, this integrates governance of enterprise IT to enterprise governance. So this is the mapping between the IT related goal and the enterprise goal, all the alignment between the IT related goals and the strategy of the company, all IT supporting the business in achieving its strategy. 
So this covers everything. The third seven processes covers everything, everyone, internal and external. So let's go and see the key components of governance system. We discussed this one, the value creation components. So I will skip it. Uh, the governance enablers, we'll discuss them later on, the seven enablers we have. We have two new items here. Governance scopes, so roles, activities, and relationships. So, 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 so I'll cover them one by one. Governance scope. So what's the scope of the governments in any IT enterprise? The scope of COVID-5 is the enterprise. So I speak about the entire enterprise. So the scope is entire enterprise, as simple as this. Meaning, I mean, the company, I mean, at the company level, vision, mission, strategic objective, then directorate level, then departmental levels. So the scope is everything, everyone, anything, internal or external. External could be their customers, could be their vendors, could be their suppliers. Then now rules and activities and responsibility. COVID-5 make clear distinctions between governance and management, which, mean, which means uh, everyone knows what he's responsible for. So this is what you see here very clearly. So we have the owners and stakeholders. This is the board or the governance body. The, I mean, the management and those are the people who are working the operation, which are part of the government, which are part of the management. So the owners and stakeholders delegate. Okay, those are the people who have money. They create companies. Uh, usually there is a board representing owners and stakeholders. So they set directions for the management to follow. So the management instruct its team and uh, which uh, and align its activities that is day-to-day uh, -day and operation and goals with the goals of the company or the strategic objective they will will be working their execution and operations once they finish the report back they report mean dashboards uh, figures numbers facts to the management management will evaluate and monitor and report back to the governance body which is the board here the board is accountable so they will update their owners and stakeholders on the amount they generated the revenue they I mean they have this is for different years so this is very simple and to the point skip these slides skip these ones uh, discuss this for so principle three applying a single integrated framework usually within any company there are many standards many frameworks so to work with this Frameworks and standards are a bit complicated. So COVID-5 is very good. So it is integrating all different standards and I mean under COVID-5. So it's working as umbrella. So under that umbrella, you can integrate, you can work with all standards and frameworks. So it, that's why it says here, align with all I mean, standards and framework, a single overarching framework. So it's working as umbrella. So let us see this diagram. So this is a I mean, clear diagram. So you see in this diagram, there are many standards here. ISO for quality, transfer project management. Uh, I mean, there are many, I don't know even what they what they are. CMMI, uh, IEC. So if you see this diagram, so this is COVID-5. So you this integrates, you can work with all standards under the umbrella of COVID-5. So this is for principle number three. Principle four, I speak about enablers. We said we have seven enablers. So what is enabler? So anything, anything that's helping you to achieve the objective of the enterprise, anything will helping you. So they work as individually or collectively to achieve these objectives. So let us see them here. So as you see them here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go and discuss them in details. Principles, policies, and framework. Usually, these are set by the board. So this is the desired behavior. So this is the let's say what the board want to see in the company, how the company should be, how the management should be working by following. So this is a kind of desired behavior and guidance to be followed. Company. Uh, that's why principles are working as high level. Policy are working on. I mean, at the higher levels framework working at the high, higher levels. So the management will be converting this into 
operations and to executions. Well, principles will be followed when they work on these projects, initiatives, when they work on day to day, when they work on operations. Processes, uh, processes, uh, well, what does it mean of process? So, process could be set of activities or set of steps to complete something. In the, in the class, we spoke about hiring process. So when you, when you want to hire an employee in a company, so you have uh, steps, maybe six or seven step uh, issue or release, I mean, job advertisement. Uh, I mean, uh, collect CVs, evaluate CVs, uh, call for, uh, I'm shortlisted, call for interviews, evaluation of the candidates, then I mean, finally select and inform them. So, th so this is the meaning of process, which means uh, steps or number of activities to complete something, to complete, uh, I mean, uh, to achieve or to achieve something. Uh, organization structure, so within any company, there's structure at the, the management level. Uh, usually, CEO, different directors for, let's say, IT director, finance director, uh, I mean, marketing director. So each one knows what he's working on. Each one is accountable for some, for, for his activities, responsibilities. Each one have different authorities. Okay, so at the board level as well, uh, we have uh, structure. So you board chair, by the way, chairman of the board, usually. We have board members. Each board is responsible for something. For example, one is responsible for auditing and risk management. Uh, one is responsible for, for financial compliance. One would be responsible for marketing. One responsible for legal, let's say for legal compliance. Uh, culture, ethics, and behavior. Usually, I mean, every single organization has its own culture, ethics, and behavior. Usually, this is a driven or this is driven or influenced by the top leaders or by the executive. So, the ethics and behavior of uh, the CEO, so which means the I mean, uh, staff and the company will be influenced by it. Uh, I mean the I mean the ethics and behavior of the board of director, so the management will be influenced by it. So that's why we always say lead by example. So if we have the board, we'll be setting them themselves as examplers to be followed by the management, which means they will be following the rules. I mean, everything will be following the books and the rules, which means the management will be following the rules, books, I mean, all these corruptions will be gone if all people are straight and I mean, working as per the laws. If they are not working as per the laws, which means everyone will be corrupt, uh, corrupted because they are not good examples to be followed. If the manager, if the director is coming at 10 a.m., he should be there by 8. And then he will come and say to the employee, why you came at 11? I think this is a good, this is a bad, uh, I mean, example. So he cannot say that to his employee. Uh, I mean, uh, if he comes at 8, for sure the employee will come before 8. If he leaves by 5, the staff will be leaving after 5. So this is for sure. But if he's coming at 10 and leaves at 2, so he's setting himself as a bad example. Uh, this is what, what, I mean, we have a ayah in Quran, so ayah, تَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرُ وَتَأْمُرُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ This is very, I mean, clear explanation of culture, ethics, and behavior of the company with, by both, by management and by اللَّهُمَ الْسْمَى اللَّهُمَ board. Information, information is the essence of any organization. They cannot work without information. Everything in that organization is information. We speak about processes, which means information there is an input. Processing information is happening in the background by systems and by applications. There is an output. The output is information. So, I mean, organization is full of information. So, information is the essence of any organization. Uh, we have services, infrastructure, and applications which are supporting uh, I mean, completion of the business, completion of the business activities, completion of the processes. So this is helping it. So services usually requires applications. Applications require usually infrastructure. And the final outcomes of it is, is information at the end. 
So applications that input is the application information. Uh, the applications will be processing this information. The output will be information. The information will be used by the management and will be used by the board. I mean, for, to make decisions. Uh, finally, we have people, skills, and competency who will be working on the processes, will be working on the projects, will be working the activities and tasks, not people. So for sure, there is a set of minimum set of required skills and competency that those people should have in order to complete their processes, activities, tasks, and projects or initiatives. So these uh, these are a um, simple explanation of the seven enablers. Skip this. Uh, for uh, um, the enablers, they could work, as said in the beginning, individually or collectively. Uh, here we are exp explaining the example of collectively, so they work together. So we call it interconnected enablers. So IT services, for example, needs, okay, what services? For sure, it should consist of processes, steps to be followed. That's why it's a required processes. The processes requires people to work on it. So where the people will come, will come from the structure itself. So operational guys will be working on operational processes. Financial guys will be working on the financial financial processes. Here, IT services require infrastructure and require applications. Okay? Okay, who is working on it, maintaining it, updating it, fixing errors, working on day-to-day -day complaints of the systems, the network is down, PC is down, printer is down, are people, uh, they need uh, specific certain skills that and competency they should be aware of. Uh, the company, there's a certain behavior that they should follow, which is influenced by the board, by the governance body or the management team. So if the culture of the company is positive, working hard, performance based, which means uh, the people will have behavior of doing things from their heart. I mean, uh, completing things, uh, let's say, basically, okay, uh, one more thing in uh, principle four, I mean, all enablers have dimensions. So we have seven, There's, this is one, one diagram. We have seven enablers, which means we'll have seven similar charts of this. There will be some changes. Uh, I think in the slides you'll see them in red. It's not required for uh, 444, uh, I mean, course. But I mean, I've just explained this diagram. Uh, the dimensions are helping in this one. This is the key message here. It's provide a common, simple, and structured way to deal with enablers. That's it. So don't go in more details. So each enabler has dimensions. So stakeholders, one dimension. Dimension two goals, life cycle, and good practices. Stakeholders means uh, for anything there's internal and external stakeholders. Goals, which means what, uh, what, what is the goal of this enabler? We speak about quality, we speak about relevance, we speak about accuracy, we speak about free from errors. How, I mean, how you can accessibility and security. Uh, for each, uh, I mean, each enabler, ha I mean, has a life cycle since from inception until it is updated or disposed. Without going details, good practices could be implemented. Or uh, let's international best practices could be utilized. I mean, I mean to make the outcomes of specific enablers high and uh, high quality and effective and efficient. We have another thing here is called enabler performance management. How to make sure that we have, I mean, taking to account uh, I mean, stakeholder needs. How to make sure that the goals are achieved. How to make sure that life cycle is managed well. How to make sure that good practices are applied. So we speak about metrics here or KPIs or targets. I mean, to achieve it. So we speak about KPIs. Uh, we spoke, spoke about it many times. Key performance indicators or targets or, uh, to be achieved. We set targets for this one, stakeholders, goals, again, for life cycle and good practices. This one we call it lag indicators because this is mainly about the outcomes. So we see facts, figures, and numbers. Here we call this one lag indicators. It's mainly about functioning of life cycle, functioning of good practices. So this is in short. 
Let's skip this. Yeah, skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, skip from here because now we will see the same diagram for each enabler. So we'll see seven diagram. So th this was the complicated part in COVID five and three four three. So I think from slide ninety five to. Yeah, to slide number one one fifty three. So principle five is separating governance from management. I think this is very simple. We have covered it. I mean, wait a Let's go to the direct. Where, 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 where are we? Okay, this one. So it's very clear. What's what's the meaning definition of governance management? We have EDM. Evaluate direct monitor. We have four domains here. Uh, I mean, uh, you can define it in this way. Usually, the board is uh, governance is chaired by by the board of director. The management chaired by CEO. So this is uh, so. COVID five makes clear distinction between governance and management. So if you know clearly the processes for governance. You know the processes for management. 37 processes, 5 here, 32 here. So I think this is what we discussed earlier. There is interaction usually between governance and management. Uh, you see this interaction here. So the, the, the governance, uh, when they evaluate stakeholders' need, they direct the management team to work on something. They set, the, I mean, the direction here. Then when, when they finish, management team, when they completed jobs, they report back. Uh, that's why the board of governance will monitor performance of the management. So there's interactions happening here. So management giving feedback usually to the board. And and uh, and, we, and we can do the same as well using the enablers, the seven enablers. Just see this one, this diagram, because this is the, the most important diagram here. Uh, we have the seven enablers here. So I'm just speaking about the interaction between governance and management. Within processes, I have just explained and many times um, this morning and now that we have 37 processes, five for governance and uh, 32 for Loma management. We have one domain for governance, four domains for uh, management. So, I mean, it's very clear which processes are for governance. It's very clear which processes are for normal management. Usually, processes have input and output. Uh, I mean, input could be, will be processes, <coughs> and the output will be processes. So we speak about process, then there is another process in the middle, then there is output as a process. So there's interaction happening between governance and management. For information, we just speaking about processes, each process has input. The input is Again, another process has an output. The output is another process. So, information, everything we are doing in any organization is information. So, the process who work as an input is, I mean, contains information. Then there is process in the middle, which is information. The output is information. So, we know exactly the information at the governance level. We know the information at the management level. Organization structure. I mean, uh, for the board, there is a chairman of the board, and there are bo board members. Each board is responsible for something. We said in the beginning, uh, one could be responsible for risk management, one could be responsible for auditing, one could be responsible for financial, one could be responsible for monitoring operations, one could be responsible for monitoring marketing performance. The same for the company itself, for the management team. It is led by CEO, then usually you have direct rates. Technical directorate, operations directorate, financial directorate, marketing directorate. So organization structure is very clear for is very clear for government for the, at the governance level and at the management level. Principles, policies, and framework usually these are set by the board. So that's why the board is setting. I mean the direction for the company to follow the desired. I mean direction. So they that's why it's. See here, direction setting, and the management then 
executing these directions. So there's very clear I mean, distinctions. Policy, policy procedure framework at the board level. Then the management will be executing, will be converting this into actions and uh, procedures, processes, uh, steps to be followed. Uh, culture, ethics, and behavior, we spoke both are involved here. The governance is involved here as well. The management is involved here. So lead by example. If they say, if they set themselves as good examples to be followed, then the full company will be having positive culture, uh, good ethics, and good behavior. If they set themselves as bad, I mean examples. So they are not supporting culture. Ethics are bad. Behavior is bad. So full company will be operating on that. I mean, mode or that tone. So, is the responsibility of the governance or the board and the management to have positive culture and to have good ethics and to have good behavior? Okay, if I am saying now, Tamarun and Nasibil Bir, what I'm saying, and for second, there's an iron Quran. I mean, set to yourself as example. So, don't speak if you, I mean, if you don't set yourself as a good example. So, you come late at 11. Then you are going and questioning your stuff. Why you came at eight? No, why you didn't come at eight? No, you cannot ask that question. It is bad practice. And then people, skills, and competency. We said that their structure at uh, the management level, their structure at the board level. So each one within that structure knows what he should be working on, what he's responsible for, what he's accountable for. At the board level as well, each one knows his roles and responsibilities. Then, since we are speaking about responsibilities, accountabilities, uh, we speak about authorities, for sure there are people behind it. So we should have the right person in the right place, which means the, the person should be having the necessary skills to accomplish this task, the necessary competencies to accomplish this task, both, both at the board level and at the management level. Finally, services, infrastructure, and applications. So the management usually, or the company, they provide services. They have applications. Both of them, service and applications, are supported by infrastructure. So the outcome of services, infrastructure, and applications will be information. So the information will be used by the management to make decisions for their day-to-day -day activities, for their operationals, for accomplishing their projects, tasks, and activities. And the same information will be used by the board or by the governance body for evaluating and setting directions and monitoring uh, the performance of the management team. So this is, I believe, for, uh, I mean, principle five. One more thing, I just will go quickly over it. Yeah, I think you will find this in the slides. It's not necessary. It's not needed for 4.4. Four, four. I'll just explain very quickly. This is EDM one. So the process number one in uh, governance. Uh, usually there is, uh, I mean, uh, guidelines, processes, guidelines within, it is not, there's another book for that. You will find their uh, process description statement, the IT related goals, and the KPIs for the IT related goals. Uh, the processes goal. So we since we asked me about EDM, one so these are the goals to be achieved for edm1 these are the kpis to be achieved for edm1 skip this one uh, this is what i was saying earlier since we were speaking about edm1 there is input and there is an output here when you focus on this one the input is i mean another process it is here mea3 and the output will be another process so here, all EDM, APO1, APO3. So each process has input. The input is another process. Each process has an output. The output is another process. And there's interaction usually between governance and management. I think this is, uh, I think uh, this is it for what is left from today that I, I couldn't, I forgot to record. Uh, I think with this we covered uh, governance, which is domain number two of CISA. 
Hopefully it is clear enough and simple and direct and to the point. It is not difficult because you know it. Because you have studied 343, you have studied COVID 5. So it is exactly the same. There was one question at the end by Dina saying which material to focus on. Is it uh, the COVID 5 slides or the 444 slides? I will just go back to 44 slides. If you see them quickly, it's exactly the same slides. I mean, these are exactly the same slides of COVID-5, but in different order, with no emphasis, with no red lines, I mean, with no red colors. So I just made it simple there because you know the layout, layout you studied it for 343, so you know it. You attended examination 343, so you know it. So I, so I don't want to confuse you or or maybe find difficult uh, difficulty in the order of the slide. So I just see it quickly. I think stopped here. So these are the covered five. We covered it. Principle number one. Same slides. Same, same, same. Everything is the same. These are the appendixes and uh, and diagram and figures. Whole cascade. Okay, so still now principle two covering the pause into end. We discussed this one, so the same. But I mean the order and the, the content is a bit different. But you used to you used to you know three four three, so that's why I studied from there. Principle two, principle three. Applying a single integrated framework, so the same content. Uh, okay, it's not clear, maybe. This one, applying a single, what's the meaning of applying a single integrated framework? It's a bit, uh, it's might, maybe not clear here. See, I mean, it's not focused. Let, let me just show you how it was clear on the slide. <coughs> Okay, line is single. Okay, I'm referring to this one. See, it's the mapping between different standards, between different frameworks company follow, and uh, COVID-5 working as an umbrella. I mean, under that umbrella, you can fit, can map any framework or any standard. So let's go back to these slides. So this is for, I mean, may, maybe principle three is not clear here, but in the COVID slides, it's very clear. Four, we discussed the enablers, nothing new, the dimensions, the KPIs or the matrices, matrix, matrices. And, and finally, principle five, governance. So we discuss everything in governance. This is, well, I think, uh, so with that you see that is the same content, but in a different order, in different um, layout. That's it. With this, I will. I just want to thank you. Hopefully, this video recording helping the ones who didn't attend this morning and who couldn't find. Uh, I mean, uh, the record. I mean, because we didn't record the full session. We recorded half of it. Then I disconnected. I connected again. So something was missing. So I thought to help the ones who didn't attend this morning session okay so on Wednesday there is no lecture with me but uh, Khawla will have a lecture with you so I'll be meeting you inshallah on Monday from 9 30 so I'll set the meeting from 9 30 to 12 30 whenever we finish we'll stop okay and I'm not sure about next Wednesday I will have to coordinate with Khawla so thank you very much and have a good day and all the best in your online classes and your education. Bye.